Hi there, my name is Dustin Beebe. Um, I've been here with Titan Machinery for about 15 years now. I'm a combine specialist here, and today we are going to go through a mid-range combine and talk about the fundamentals. Next we're coming down to the cleaning fan. Right in here we want to visually inspect to make sure that all of our fan blades are intact, not missing, or broken. If they are all in good shape, we want to also inspect the drive belt itself, the cleaning fan drive belt, and the pulleys. So right now we can see this belt looks pretty good, still pretty wide. Um, down here in these pulleys we want to make sure that there isn't any big ridges in these sheaves. If they are good, another thing to check on these cleaning fans is there is a thrust bearing behind here. We want to make sure that that thrust bearing is greased properly and not too growly. So in order to get back to that, there's two bolts right here we can take off. If we remove this bolt and this bolt here, we can open this cage up and right behind there is a thrust bearing. You want to put a little pressure on it and turn it. If it's growly at all, it's time to replace that. I just pry it off of the pry bar and tap on a new one. If it's nice and smooth, go ahead and put everything back together and uh, it will be good to run. Now we're going to go through and look at the, the sieves on this machine here and we're just going to visually inspect it all and make sure that there is nothing broke, that our main frame isn't broke, that any of these fingers are bent down too far or stuck underneath of each other or that the chopper hasn't caused any damage to any of our sieves that if it's damaged so much that we cannot adjust to our proper settings um, we want to make sure that that isn't happening. So visually we can see that this sieve looks really good. Uh, there's not very many, few bent fingers, nothing major, it's not going to cause any issues. None of the supports are bent, the main frame is good, um, and it looks like it's, it's pretty well taken care of. Um, another thing that we can look at is the different types of sieves that we have. So this here is the upper sieve or the chafer sieve. This sieve in this machine here is an inch and five eighths closed slat. And how we tell that is from the crease here on top of this sieve finger to the tip is an inch and five eighths, if we were to measure this. And how they get closed slat is this slat is closed three quarters of the way through. You can see that there. Where an inch and five eighths open slat or a corn sieve, this, this opening here would go all the way back to here. That would be called a corn sieve or an inch and five eighths open sieve. So this machine here is set up for corn um, in our area. We're running an inch and five eighths closed slat lower sieve and an inch and five eighths closed slat upper sieve. So this machine here is set up for beans and corn. If we were to set this up for wheat, we would be going with an inch and an eighth bottom sieve and probably an inch and an eighth upper sieve as well. So next we got the clean grain elevator. We're gonna go through that and talk about some of the key parts of that. Um, number one being the elevator chain, making sure that that is good and tight. Uh, none of the paddles are broke, bent or missing. The uh, drive chain, we wanna make sure that that is properly tensioned so that it doesn't uh, have a lot of play in it. And as you can see, those black rollers up there, this has an aftermarket kit on it it's called a, a roller roller kit and that helps take the slap out of these chains because that chain has to go so far up there to run the top auger. Um, the other thing we'll touch with is how to adjust this elevator chain here real quick. If this chain is out of adjustment there's two ways we have to do this with a machine that has a yield monitor. It should be adjusted up top first and what you want is with a paddle pointing straight up you want three eighths of a gap from the top of that paddle to the bottom of the yield moisture, the yield monitor pad. Once that is set, we come down here and we will loosen these four bolts, and this will drop our lower sprocket down until we get the proper tension that we want. We'll tighten these four back up, and your clean grain chain at that point is properly tensioned and set for the yield monitor. Next, we're going to go into tensioning your drive chain. On the back side here, there is a tensioner for the clean grain drive chain. 
we have a gauge on the side here that shows us how tight we need to keep this but if that for some reason that is missing from the bottom of this bracket here to the bottom of this washer we want to have six inches once we have that set that will get our chain to the tension that we need here on the elevator jack shaft this is what drives the clean grain and the tailings elevators we want to make sure that our springs are in good shape here and that there is also in the back side behind this plate that there should be a gap here between this hub and this plate. As long as there is a gap there, this is gonna be okay. We just wanna make sure that our drive sprockets are not wore out and that our jack shaft bearings on the outside here and on the inside look good. Now we're gonna talk about the grain tank and the loaning auger system. Uh, first off, we need to look at our drive chains. Make sure that they're uh, in good shape not all really rusty and that the tension is up to spec on these. We don't want these too loose at all. And also it is not a bad thing to replace them chains every year. They take a lot of wear and tear throughout the season. Uh, next thing here is the unloading auger drive belt. We wanna make sure we spin this thing around and visually look at it to make sure there's no big cracks or any bad spots in it. Once we're done there, your lower unloading auger gearbox uh, it's very crucial that a guy changes the oil in this every single year. It gets a lot of heat, uh, a lot of wear and tear on it, so it's, it's a good thing to, in all the gearboxes, to change these yearly to keep all the moisture and everything out. We also want to inspect the vertical incline auger. Uh, make sure that the auger flighting looks good, that it isn't too thin or starting to bend over. If that is the case, it is time for a new incline auger or vertical auger. Uh, next off, we will go up in the grain tank and we will look at the cross augers. So when we get up here in the grain tank, we want to make sure that we get down and look at the auger flighting on our cross augers in the bottom of the grain tank. Again, to make sure that they're not thin, breaking, or starting to peel off um, and causing an issue tearing the bottom of the grain tank open itself. If they look fine, we'll come up here and we want to visually look at our incline auger. Again, to make sure that the auger flighting isn't too thin or broken off at all. We also want to check the incline auger tube to make sure that there isn't any signs of holes anywhere and along the bottom. Now we're going to talk about the unloading auger itself. The best way to check the unloading auger would be to swing it out of the saddle. Um, in, inside of here there's an access panel and if we take these four nuts off and remove that panel we can check the auger flighting like we just did for the incline auger and the vertical auger. If they all look good and if the elbow looks good, um, the unloading auger system should be ready to go.